finding the critical value of chi-square. And we're saying chi-square, um, we're, we're looking at this, it looks like it's kind of a swirly line and then a straight line and then a little number two up top. So chi-square, it's not chi or, or chi, but it's chi-square. And just like with T and Z and F and R, as long as our chi-square obtained is larger than our chi-square crit, we can reject the null. So same premise there applies. Um, we have two different types of chi-square. So the first one we're going to look at is chi-square goodness of fit. Okay. And this really looks at just when we have one variable. So if you're trying to find the preference of eye color, hair color, um, gender, um, political affiliation, whatever you're trying to look at, um, we just have one um, a variable that we're looking for. So um, we're going to do chi-square goodness of fit. And the second one is chi-square um, test of independence. And this one um, we're going to use when there's more than one um, a, call it dependence, sorry, <laughs> uh, more than one variable. So looking at having not just red hair, but having red hair and blue eyes, having red hair, blue eyes, and freckles, however you want to look at like that, right? Okay, so we have a couple different um, types of, of chi-square. So here over here is degrees of freedom, and that's how you find your critical region of chi-square. Chi-square goodness of fit degrees of freedom is degrees of freedom equals um, call our categories minus one. So again, these categories can be any kind of nominal data, um, left-handed versus right-handed, um, freshman, sophomore, senior, sixth grade, kindergartner, that type of stuff, um, red hair, blonde hair, green hair, or green eyes, or blue eyes, or I guess green hair too, right? So however many categories, minus one. So if I'm looking at a class and say, okay, we're going to look at hair color, and I have um, my categories are red hair, um, blonde, no hair, gray, and brown, we'll say, right, so we have five categories. My degrees of freedom is categories minus one, so I'd have five minus one, or four. So I would go down here and see, okay, there's my um, four degrees of freedom. Okay. Um, another thing to keep in mind, too, is your alpha level. All right, so um, is alpha um, 0 0.05, that's probably the most um, common one, right? So here's our alpha level, um, or alpha 0 0.01 is also pretty common. So two things to look for, degrees of freedom and alpha level. Degrees of freedom for chi square goodness of fit is categories minus one. But for test of independence, um, degrees of freedom is a little bit more complicated. It's your rows, however many rows you have, um, minus one, times your column, right? So however many um, variables you have in your columns, uh, minus one. So if I have a simple two by two matrix, then it's just um, two minus one is one, times two minus one is one again, so one might have one degrees of freedom. If I'm looking at a, um, a five by five, it would be then four times um, four, right? So I would have a, a 16 degrees of freedom. Um, and again, 10 by 10, which would be a nine times nine, so 81 degrees of freedom. Now this is a student version, so you just go with, with the 80, right? We don't really have 81 for this one, okay? So if you were to say, I have um, chi-square goodness of fit, and I have five categories, an alpha level 0.05, I would go, okay, five categories, so five minus one is four, so I have four degrees of freedom. So it's going to be in this call, or this line, this row right here. And if I said I had um, alpha set at 0 0.05, well then my critical value of chi-square is 9.49, versus if I had my alpha level set at 0 0.01, then my um, critical value of chi-square would be like 13.28. Okay. Now, what if I had um, chi-square uh, test of independence? Right, and so say I had, I don't know, um, I do, I'm doing a three by three matrix, right? So I have three columns minus one times three rows minus one, so two times two is four. Again, I have that four degrees of freedom, so it's gonna be somewhere here. And again, if it's alpha 0.01, um, 13.2, and alpha 0.05, 9.49. So um, something to keep in mind also, chi-square, anything squared is a positive number, so you're always going to have a positively skewed distribution. What we're looking for here is that, that critical value of chi, or um, chi-square crit. Okay. Same premise applies, though. Anything chi-square obtained falls in this region. This is our critical region, right? We can reject our null hypothesis. Anything over here in this one, that's going to be more of our fail-to-reject region.